Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone, and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about a 7.3 power stroke and a very common oil leak. So if you have a 7.3 and in the engine valley, all right, so there's two common, common leaks, things to leak on this truck. One is oil and the other one's fuel. All right, so if you have fuel, the first in your valley, you'll have it, it'll, it'll look like it's running down the back of the engine. In between the engine and the transmission uh, and if you have a fuel leak there you have a water you have a, um, a drain valve on the back of your fuel filter bowl you want to look at that that's a really common leak uh, and then I would strongly recommend that you don't go with the doorman part uh, they leak I mean I the first one I went to do at my new shop the, they got me a doorman one and it it wasn't even good they got me another one and before I even put it on it was bad got a motorcraft it was fixed <laughs> But we're not talking about fuel. I just want to give you a little tech tip. We're talking about oil. So you'll have this oil leak in the valley and it'll be running down the back of the engine. It's at the back of the valley has, has holes that are designed for, or really for the fuel to run back. Um, and if you're parked on an incline where the front of the truck is up higher than the rear, it'll leak really bad. Um, but that common oil leak back there is your high pressure oil pump. It's very common to leak. It has lots of different types of leaks. There's multiple things on it that can leak. Um, you also have an IPR valve there. There's, there's oil feed lines that can leak, but the pump is the most common to leak. And you can usually see it. I mean, a lot of times you can see it just by looking down there. The one I'm going to show you today, that one I could see. Actually, I, got a, I, I could see it dripping, and I got a mirror. And with a mirror, I could just see it just running right out of a fitting in the back of the pump. So in this video, I'm going to show you uh, what it takes to replace this high pressure pump. Uh, it's not a very hard job to do. Uh, it just requires a few tools and one special one special tool, which you I mean you can get by without, uh, and that's the oil pressure um, feed line uh, disconnect tool. Uh, you can you can make things to work for that. Uh, it's very similar to uh, um, uh, like a Ford Ranger that has a quick disconnect for the clutch uh, slave and master cylinder. I never had that tool um, and I made things work. You can make it work, just be careful. It's a plastic piece, I'll show you the line, but there's a plastic piece that pushes up. You slide in between the line and basically you're taking the plastic piece and you're sliding it up like this and it's releasing a clip, which is allowing the line to come off. Well, it also has to pop back in place. So be very careful if you're gonna try to make, make something work that you don't damage that. Because then you'll have to buy new lines or you'll, you know, you'll have it on and then it'll pop off. And then that would be really bad. You'd lose all your oil. And uh, so anyways, so let's get into this. I'm going to show you how to replace it. And uh, let's check it out. Okay. 2001 F350, I think, 7.3 power stroke. This one has a leaking high pressure oil pump. And uh, I'm going to tell you how to get this done. So first things first. Your engine valley will be full of oil. That is the most, the biggest thing down there to be full of oil. And a lot of times you can see what, where it's coming from. For us, it's coming from that metal fitting right there, a fitting on the back of the high pressure pump. Uh, we're not rebuilding anything, we are just replacing. So first things first, we're gonna take this cover off right here. We're gonna disconnect both of these charge air hoses right here. And we're gonna leave them. We're not gonna take them out of the truck. We're just gonna move them over. We're gonna pull them out of the way because we need to take off this uh, this uh, intake assembly right here. So when you take off charge air hoses, all right. A little tech tip for you is always disconnect the engine or the turbo side, intercooler side. Don't disconnect the pipe side unless you have to. When you do that, you take a chance on it not seating and it popping off. Uh, so I always disconnect it here, and if I'm taking the hose out, I'll disconnect it down there at the intercooler. Uh, same thing over here on this one here. I would disconnect just the turbo end and the intercooler end and pull the whole thing out. All right, so let's get these charge air hoses disconnected, and uh, we gotta disconnect this uh, intake heater right here. We gotta disconnect the uh, wastegate solenoid and vacuum lines here 
We got the map sensor hose to disconnect. We've got a couple connectors down there, a couple vacuum ports. We've got a hose clamp here. Now at the bottom of this manifold here, of this intake assembly that we're gonna be taking out, is a rubber boot that connects to the intake on both heads. All right, so there's two hose clamps. There's one lower and one upper. All right, the trick to doing this is on this side over here, I'm going to disconnect the lower hose clamp, okay? And on this side, I'm gonna disconnect the upper hose clamp. It's easier to slide it in when you have one boot on and one boot off. And I'll show you that when we get to it. All right, so let's get started on this. Let's go. Okay, so here's that compressor manifold here. You got the intake heater. There's a 10 millimeter nut. It's a 10 millimeter nut right here. It's captured to the line, to the, to the cable that goes to the relay, all right? So you take that off, and then there is a um, there's a metal piece and a spacer and a ground wire. All right, the ground wire goes from there to this stud right here. All right, so here's your ground wire. You're gonna take that off. Here's your vacuum line assembly. This goes to the wastegate like this. It's gonna come down here. This is gonna connect down to the lower part of the compressor manifold. That's gonna go back to the wastegate. And then this is gonna go into the intake air tube. Just pull it out. You got your wastegate solenoid here, eight millimeter. All right, pop that off. Disconnect all your electrical connectors for everything. All right, so the next things we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the IPR valve. which is right there, that guy right there, all right? We're gonna take that out. There's a nut on the end, and then a spacer, and then you gotta use, I think it's a one and an eighth deep socket to unthread the IPR and get it out. Uh, we're also going to be taking off these high pressure oil lines. So here's one here. We're gonna leave that one. We're gonna disconnect them over here at this end, down there at the pump. Right there, there's one straight down there. There's two of them. They feed each head. Here's what I recommend. You get some of these. These are for disconnecting those lines. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna get in between here and it's gonna push this plastic up into the line and that's gonna disconnect the clip, all right? So we're gonna disconnect these and take out that IPR. Let's go. All right, so these high pressure oil lines, all right, so here they are right here. All right, the way that it works is this. You have your tool here, and you slide your tool in between the plastic and the line. What that does is it pushes the plastic up, which depresses the clip, and that's how you take them out, all right? So take both of these out, get them out of the way. All right, so here's the IPR valve. All right, the IPR valve looks like this. All right, so you've got, you've got a 19 millimeter nut here, and you've got a spacer, all right? If you ever work on these things, a lot of times you'll see these laying in the engine valley, and it'll have a drivability problem because they didn't put this nut on right, uh, they didn't put it on tight enough, and this thing fell off. So basically what happens is the electrical portion of the solenoid is sliding up and down the IPR. It's not connected properly, so it goes in here. Now this is how it controls the high pressure oil is with this valve right here. Different design is a six liter, but does the same thing. Got the connector there, all right? So when you put this on, make sure that you torque it properly. This is, so you gotta take that nut off, that spacer, slide that solenoid off, and then this is one and one eighth. So, here's my inch and an eighth half inch drive socket. I use this to get it off, all right? So next thing we're gonna do, so we've got everything in the valley disconnected down here, except for the pump, all right? So now we gotta come to this side. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this exhaust back pressure sensor off, all right? And we're gonna take off that nut down there, right there. Okay, there's two eight millimeter nuts and a cover. We're gonna take that cover off and we're gonna get to the nut. There's a nut that captures the, there's a gear inside this cover right here. Inside this housing, there's a big gear. And this gear is timed down below. It's timed to the cam and it times the engine. The pump goes into the gear. I'll show you that as we get it out. But basically we gotta get that cover off so we can get the nut broke loose so we can get this pump out of here. All right, let's go. Back pressure sensor, cover, nut. Let's do it. Okay, so here's what I ended up doing on this one to make it easier. I went ahead and popped the belt off and just stuck it down there to get it out of the way. I popped this idler out just to get it out of the way. Take off this back pressure sensor right here. You disconnect the tube at the bottom. And it looks like this, all right? So you disconnect the tube because this is part of the cover, all right, that you gotta take off. So just leave all this. There's no reason to mess with that. So just take off that tube. We got these two eight millimeters. You can pry it on this side right here with a screwdriver and it'll start to break loose and then you can get down there and break it free. It's a gray 7.3 uh, silicone, Ford silicone. All right, so you're gonna pop this off. All right, and so now, what you'll see right now is I already took it out, but so then there's the pump, there's the shaft of the pump and there's the, the gear that it's gonna go into, all right? So this gear is really big. Um, so it looks like this inside, all right? And from what I understand, this washer here is too fat to fall down uh, in case you uh, drop it. But um, I would just say uh, don't do it because as many times as I've done something that certain things can't happen, there's always that one that it can. So don't drop it because that'll really suck. So we're here with an 18 millimeter, all right? So it's not incredibly difficult to get loose. I have an 18 inch 3 8 ratchet, all right? I use the 3 8 because I needed a 3 8 socket and extension, all right? A little three inch extension with an eight, 18 millimeter. And this goes right in between the exhaust tube and the heater hose. You don't need to take any of those off. So you take that bolt and that washer out next thing we're going to do, and I'll show you when I get it out, is there's two 10 millimeter uh, bolts or nuts down there that hold the pump in place. We're going to take those out, and then we're going to pop the pump. Take the pump out, and we're going to clean this valley. Look at all that oil. This is what happened. You got a bad leaking pump. Look at all that oil down there. All right? A lot of garbage. I got to clean all this up, get this engine valley nice and pretty. All right? Let's roll. All right, so here we go. Here is the pump that's out, all right? So this is the bottom side of the pump, all right? Different things that leak right here. This right here, things that can leak. We don't rebuild these things, so if they're leaking, then they get a new one right here, all right? So here's where your oil lines connect, right there and there. And there's the top, all right? So. Let me get another rag because this thing is going to dump some oil. Alright, so here's your gasket. Alright, your gasket should should come off with it. It might stay with it. You don't know. Anyways, there's your, there's your gasket. Get you a new one. If you get a motorcraft pump, it comes with the gasket. Alright, so in my case, what was leaking was back here. I believe it was pouring out of this right here. All right, so like I said, we don't rebuild these things. We replace them. Now, the new one, so now the things to note on the back is this. So here's the back of the pump. Here's where your IPR valve goes, all right? And that's where your 10 millimeter goes, and that's where your 10 millimeter goes. All right, so basically we have removed this old pump, got the new one, Got everything cleaned up. It looks beautiful. All right, I got it cleaned up the best I can. Went all the way back through the valley. 
Got all these harnesses pulled out of the way and disconnected and tucked away because this pump is a little bit tricky to get out. You gotta kind of finagle it to get it around the different fuel lines down there, all right? So that's how you get it out. Now let's put it back in. Okay, here we go. All right, so the two 10 millimeter bolts, there's a long one and a short one. The short one goes on the passenger side, the long one goes on the driver's side, and it's 18 foot pounds. Make sure that it lines up into the sprocket. Okay, there's a hole in the center of the sprocket. When I first put the pump in, the sprocket had kind of laid to the side a little bit, so I had to finagle the sprocket so the, the nose of the pump went through the sprocket. There's no keyway on it because this isn't a timed pump. This is just a oil pump. So then you want to torque this nut or this bolt to 95 foot-pounds. You're going to have to have somebody hold the crank and, uh, and torque that. And then now we're going to... Now we're going to basically do everything in reverse. We're going to clean this off. We're going to clean off the, the cover there. And we're going to put some fresh silicone. We're going to get this sucker on. We're going to start connecting all of the connectors and the oil lines and getting this back together. Let's go. So thanks for watching the video. I hope I was informative in helping you uh, figure out how to, how to diagnose this, what your oil leak is, and also how to do the repair. Um, so you feel comfortable, feel, com feel, feel comfortable and, uh, let's say maybe you don't work on diesels and this is you're starting to work on it the boss is like hey my truck's leaking whatever you know hey i got started at a diesels with here's a diesel and i had no experience no schooling no training and at this time there was no youtube i just had to try to figure it out and uh, it was very difficult you know being a flat rate tech so uh hopefully you take some of these tips and they help you uh maybe you're a gasoline mechanic and you're just branching into diesels i mean hey diesels are where it's at i mean there's a lot of diesels and there's just becoming more and more diesels and if you work on diesels an old one's gonna pop in you know you're gonna get an old one you know a lot of them are six seven power strokes and cummins and duramaxes but you're gonna get an old seven three pop in because i mean they're reliable so Anyways, uh, one tech tip I have for you is anytime you're dealing with a high pressure oil system problem, whether you're doing a repair, whether you're uh, replacing an injector, uh, where you're draining the high pressure oil, you're replacing the high pressure pump, you're doing heads, whatever you're doing, if you've disturbed the high pressure oil system, make sure that your batteries are charged prior to finishing the job. Uh, and I make this mistake all the time. Instead of throwing a charger on there and charging up the batteries while I'm working on the truck, I always wait until I get done and I get ready to start it to figure out if the batteries are strong enough to crank over. Uh, lucky for me, we have multiple chargers and jump boxes and everything else, but you know, for some people, maybe they don't have that. Maybe they have a small, simple charger, whatever. Uh, if you're working at home, if you don't have a great charger, it doesn't matter. Charge up those batteries while you're doing that repair because whenever you get ready to start it, it's going to take a while to crank. And, uh, and it really, really puts some work on your batteries. And if they're not strong and charged and, and fairly newer, uh, you're going to have a hard time getting it started. And you may have to stop and charge and come back to it. So charge up those batteries and uh, prior. So anyways, thanks for watching the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and uh, hit the bell. You get notified of all my future content. And also check me out on Instagram at Nets and Bolts with Tone for the daily life as a mechanic, which you're definitely going to want to see. Thanks for watching. See you next time.